Hi there guys, I'm Danny, and welcome to today's episode of All Monsters Go To Space. Today I'm coming at you with a video on a god we have mentioned in a couple of our videos. He was in the Argus Panoptes, Hermanubis, and the different Reapers videos. He is the ancient Greek messenger god Hermes, or Mercury if you prefer the Roman counterpart name. Now Hermes had a myriad of job titles, from being the god of trade and commerce, thieves, trickery, sports and athletes, travellers, roads and borders, even of languages, fertility, wealth and luck, and he was a real jack of all trades. His parentage is pretty straightforward, his father was Zeus, and his mother was one of Artemis' companions, the Pleiad, Maia. He was born in a cave on Mount Selene, somewhere in Arcadia, and he is also the second youngest god. Hermes is one of the only gods who can travel between the world of the living and the underworld, which is why he was tasked with the job of being a guide for souls hence his affiliation with other reapers. Now, Hermes was apparently an inventor. He invented dice, therefore the god of luck. He also invented the lyre from a tortoise shell and the alphabet. There is a story including the lyre, actually. On the day of his conception and birth, as it was all done in one day, he stole cattle that belonged to Apollo. Hermes confused the trail they left by reversing the cow's hooves, and when Apollo finally found them, they struck a deal. Hermes could keep the cattle if Apollo got the lyre, and that's how Apollo got the musical instrument that he's actually most famous for. In archaic Greece, he was depicted as a bearded man who was clothed like a traveller, but then in classical and Hellenistic eras, his image became the more familiar one to us, a young man either nude or in a short robe, and then the later depictions added on the staff, the winged sandals, and a winged hat. He has a few symbols attributed to him, as you can probably guess from the lyre, a tortoise is his animal, and he is attributed also with the rooster, then satchels, a winged hat, and sandals, and his most famous symbol, the caduceus, or in Greek, the kerikion. Now everyone actually knows this symbol, as it is used for most medical logos, the short staff that's entwined with two snakes, which is kind of ironic really, because Hermes didn't have too much to do with healing, or with any form of medicine really. And, like most gods, he had a variety of lovers over the eras. He was with the nymphs Tanagra and Penelope, the princesses Kione, Ipthame, and Apomosyne, not quite sure how to pronounce that one, and then the goddesses Aphrodite and Patho, but all at different times. And from some of these unions, he actually fathered children. He fathered Abderus, Hermaphroditus, which you can guess was from Aphrodite, and some even say he's the father of Pan. Now, since Hermes has many jobs, he also has quite a few names. Agriphantes, meaning Argus Slayer, Poimandres, Shepherd of Men, Hodios, Anorompus, Agorius, Iconus, and Chthonius, but that's just to name a few. And as we know about Hermes, he obviously played a part in Argus' legend. He also helped to free Ares from the cauldron that he had been imprisoned in for a year. But another side of Hermes is his trickster-like image. He was actually a little bit of a thief, as we covered a little earlier with the theft of Apollo's cattle. But he also took Aphrodite's girdle, Artemis' arrows, and Poseidon's trident. But I guess it pays to be the second youngest, since he didn't seem to get punished for any of this, or he was at least able to fob them off with some kind of deal. Now, he was included in many forms of literature from Grecian times. Both Homer and Hesiod had him depicted as being the creator of deception, but also being kind to mortals. In the Iliad, he was labelled as a guide and guardian, the bringer of good luck and yet excellent in all the tricks. He was also an ally to the Greeks during the Trojan War, but his softer side is portrayed here. Priam, the king of Troy at the time, wished to retrieve the body of his son Hector from the Greek camp. Hermes protected him as he did so, and even went so far as to stay with them until they managed to get back to Troy. In the Odyssey, this god helps his own great-grandson, Odysseus, when he went up against Circe by telling him how to protect himself with a herb. And most people know a little of the story of Pandora. What might not be known is that Hermes played a part in her creation. He was one of the gods who gave her gifts, and his was the gift of seductive words and lies. In the Eumenides, by Aesoclus, Hermes aided Orestes in slaying Clytemnestra. In another tale in the Philoctetes, a series of four plays, 
Sophocles calls for Hermes when Odysseus has to get Philoctetes to help with the Trojan War, and in Hellenistic tales, Hermes delivered the infant Dionysus to Ona and Athamas, and gave a young Hercules a sword as a gift when he finished his education, and he even allowed Perseus to borrow his winged sandals. Well, this about covers this often overlooked, yet exceedingly important god. I hope you enjoyed this video, as always, if you did, please leave a like, subscribe, and thank you so much for watching this video. See you in my next video, on Twitter and in the comments section. Bye!